Hello, as a fresh graduate or trainee, one question that may pop up in your mind, how quantity survey remember all the tasks? What are the QS phases for a construction project? So this video will help you a lot because today we're going to talk about the most important thing, which is document checklist of a quantity surveyor. And the purpose of this checklist is to show you the basic required document of every quantity surveys construction project like preliminaries, specification, bill of quantities and scheduling etc. So without any delay, let's get started. As we know quantity surveyors are involved in all industries of construction project but at this stage only we will begin with the villa building construction project and the quantity surveyors full working portfolio and in the future sure I will attempt more complex construction type to give you better understanding and before we proceed any further what is villa building that we are considering for this QS series actually it is a small and a bit more complex than a small cottage our villa building is known by various names in different regions and different countries such as mansion country house and summer house etc now moving forward to our topic document checklist and the purpose of this checklist is to show you the basic required document in every quantity surveys project and the first one is feasibility study the quantity surveyors role begin as early as this stage because the first question which is being asked by the client how feasible is my project in terms of process design legality cost program and operationally so this document is detailed analysis of a project's technical economic legal operational resources and scheduling factor to ascertain the likelihood of successful completion although there is no set format for this document it is often prepared by the architect and later it's customized according to the requirement of the client and usually it's required for more complex and large projects the second one is BOQ, the Bill of Quantity. This is the signature document of quantity surveyors which is prepared according to the nature of project by following some standard rules. It includes multiple things like listed item of work with their description, total quantities, measurement unit, rate per unit and the amount per item etc etc. And the purpose of this document is it enables contractors to prepare the tenders more efficiently and accurately and there are many more things that we're gonna talk about in this series but in future and the third one is preliminaries have you ever think how construction professionals consider the running and the overhead cost of a project like security telephone cost maintenance deliveries and staff facilities etc etc Prelims are the cost of site-specific overhead of any given project. They are the costs that are directly related to the running of the project that are not accounted for under labor or material. And usually, preliminaries list is the first item to consider because it is extensive and includes cost for every aspect of a project duration. These costs are divided among initial cost, recurring cost and final cost. Initial and the final cost are one of expenses while the recurring cost continue throughout the life of a project. And the fourth one is complete drawing. It's very obvious that complete set of drawings are required because that's where quantity survey is gonna depend for measurement and takeoff purpose. So QS should make sure before you proceed any further, you must have complete set of drawings including site plan, architectural drawing, structure drawing, and MEP drawings, etc. Specification. This is the document that prescribes the quality of a material, performance, labor and work of all the project. It also shows the information that is usually not mentioned in drawing in BOQ, but it's as important as other document. Now let me show you an example of tiles. 
the BOQ provides the type, cost and quantity for tiles in the kitchen. On the other hand, the specification defines the quality of tiles. What is the material grade level? Is it the cheapest quality or a medium quality or the expensive one? All in rate calculation. Let's assume you are the QS of some construction project and you need to provide the cost of total required concrete. Now, which unit rate will you use? How will you calculate and decide? So this is the minor calculation sheet that helps QS to calculate the rates of a unit like material, labor, contractors profit and waste etc. And to be honest, it varies based on the region, country and the standard rules of measurement which you may need to follow. Schedules. Have you ever noticed the quantities which are mentioned in a BOQ? Is it the same way we purchase from the market? No, right? Let me show you an example of concrete. Here QS mentioned that required RCC is in volume. Meter cube, it could be meter feet or inches as well. But this is not the way anyone can purchase. So schedules are the detailed documents that provides the specific number of each material, labor and the specific time to be purchased from the market for any project. Let's assume total quantity of concrete in foundation is 300 meter cube. Now how many bags of cement and sands do we need? I hope you understand the point now why scheduling is important. What if during the construction project, client comes up with new requirement and contractor and subcontractor denies saying that it's out of their scope? Or imagine under some circumstances, contractors are not taking the responsibility for the task that they should have done a long ago. Then what? That's why it's very important to sign the standard form of contract, which is a uniform agreement that provides a legal context in relation to construction project. And in this contract, it is predetermined everything by authorized professional, client representatives and other parties. So it helps to avoid all the misunderstanding and prevents from forgetting the basic and essential task. And there are few contracts that are being followed usually like FEDIC, GCC, JCT and new engineering contract etc etc. Procurement method. Now putting very simple, this is how a project should be procured or paid off. This document forms a legal agreement that defines terms related to the executed work, price, amount of compensation and how the compensation will be distributed. Each construction project have a contract type and few of the most common contract types are like lump sum, remeasurable, design and build, etc. etc. Tendering stage. Some of the documents are required at this stage of a project and there are two main outcome of this stage. Selection of a right contractor for the right price. And there are some types of tendering method. The first one is competitive tender. And the second is nominated tender. Just before the project is awarded, there would be a series of signature on the final contract document by the client, contractor, witness and other parties. By doing so, all parties are now subjected to what has been stated in the contract and the contractor can begin to carry out the project immediately. When and how a contractor or subcontractor can claim their payment? Should it be after 15 days? 30 days or 60 days so it is a certificate that allows a client to pay contractor in middle of a project even if it has not been completed yet it is standard of ensuring cash flow for contractor and subcontractor based on contracts variations now let me explain you with the short and true story Few years back, I was part of a villa project that was being designed for a rich politician back in my home country. 
and at that stage the flooring was almost done for a complete villa then one day client visits the site and uh, god knows what happened to him he just took a big hammer from the site and uh, he start hitting the tiles and he keep on shouting these stupid tiles i don't like it remove it pull it off now cutting into short contractor then arranged few meetings with him and client and contractor they both agreed on changing the complete tiles of a villa but the question is who bear the cost or due to any reason if the changes or modification requires on a construction project who will bear the cost so reference to this document variation when there is a change in the form of addition or omission from the original scope of work we handle this situation as variation and these changes could be required because of many reasons such as technological advancement and statutory changes etc claims reference to the same short story imagine if client refused and rejected to pay extra after breaking all those tiles of course contractor cannot afford that loss or bear by own so in this situation contractor may file a case or involve third party to resolve the matter so this claims document says when one party believes they have been made to suffer any damage and harm which the other party denies a claim can be made in this situation it could be one of the most unpleasant event of a project and it happens in many forms such as payment related claim change claims delay claim and extra work claims etc here one thing i need to clear variation and claims are not the same and we shouldn't be confused here because i have already explained by some example because it is often said that a contractor is claiming a variation but actually they may be meant a contractor is preparing application for the variation on the other side a claim can be occurred only if the employer or client rejects to pay for the application of variation and a contractor then disagree with the decision and he may pursue with the claim of negotiation or arbitration preparing final account the final account is the closing payment for the contract qs generally prepares this in the manner that is best suited to the project with the original contract sum as the starting point where employer is also responsible for preparing the final account and the best approach is for clients qs and contractors qs to work together to produce an agreed account that will generally serve as the starting point for final account discussion closing the contract occurs at the end of the project but it can be occur also during the project as a termination of a contract and it could occur due to many reason but in this section we consider project close out at the end all things are being equal we can say that this is the best time of a project or maybe worse because on one hand it is time to celebrate the end of a project because payment should be coming soon on the other hand closing the contract requires a lot of work it is a serious activity and involves completing the physical work and preparing necessary document calculating the financial etc appendices it might include different contract documents such as risk assessment minutes of meeting application for payment architect's instruction building logbook building owner's manual building user's manual and certificate of making good defects i assume most of you are already tired watching it imagine how quantity surveyors prepare all of these document under a lot of pressure so i guess that's the reason quantity survey keep the panadol and coffee cup very handy <laughs> i'm just kidding so that's it for today thank you so much for watching and to learn the whole qs course please follow the series of video learn to make a difference